Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we are going to talk more about the Ender 3. Stay tuned. I apologize for the delay in the release of the video. I had to work extra hours at the pizza shop this weekend, so I was a little busy. <laughs> um, but I've also been pretty busy on the Ender 3. I printed out myself an orange cat. I still have to print the collar and the other components of the cat. And I made a mask. I'm going to scale this up on the CR-10 so it'll fit my face because my face is a little bit bigger than this mask is. And then I'm also going to have an upcoming video where I go over the master spool. Yeah, that's actually pretty neat. And a cool gadget I got. I got some remote control outlets so that I can turn my lights on and off. I have like six sets of lights and now I can just hit a button and turn them all off without having to run around the room and <laughs> find all the switches. Um, this is my Ender 3 hop-up video. Upgrades and hop-ups. Things I've printed for it. Additions I've added to it. And we are going to go over them. Some of the things that I purchased. I purchased JST plugs and connectors. And these are for the lower power things like lights and whatnot, fans. You know, you just buy pairs. I bought a whole bag of them. Since I have a lot of printers and a lot of mods to make, I bought the bulk because that is cheaper per piece. You don't have to get the giant bags if you don't want to. I also added the um, dampers, which are stunning. They They are... The difference in noise is absolutely dramatic. It's 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 incredible. <laughs> I really didn't think it would make that big a difference. I got some heat sinks, which I'm still trying to figure out how to attach. Um, attaching to X won't be that hard once I figure out how to adhere them. And Z, the um, extruder won't be hard, although it doesn't really need it, although it still gets warm. But the steppers on this thing get really hot. I mean, like... I put my hand on the back of this X-stepper and my instinct is to remove my hand. It's that hot to where I don't want to keep my hand on there when it's when it's been running for a while. Um, that's not good. So I've never had steppers get that hot. That's weird. So I'm going to, um, I wonder if they had the voltage cranked up too high and if that could add noise. Interesting. I'll have to look into that. But I got some heat sinks, some 40 by 40 heat sinks that fit on the back of the steppers and they came with these thermal pads. And I thought they were adhesive. They're not. So these thermal pads are not adhesive. So I need to figure out a way to attach them to the stepper. The stepper in the back here is going to have to be attached to the side, not the back of the stepper, because the Y carriage and knobs crashes into it. Um, but yeah, I'll figure out how to attach those, and that'll be in an, an additional video. I also replaced the feeder assembly components with all metal I'll show you that later so this is the old one basically it's the same thing it's just in aluminum instead of plastic and these are fantastic so I'm going to keep these for any other printers I upgrade so I'll probably put one of these on the ANA E12 and stick one of these on the Tron XY X X3S you know any other CR10 style printer or any other printer that has a Bowden setup that uses this kind of um, arrangement I'll put these components on it heck I'll put this on the U10 too I got a box of a dozen of them when Creality was selling them for a dollar. I bought a whole bunch. <laughs> then one of my more important upgrades is these two components. I had to buy two. You can't use this by itself. It's too short for the way I want to do it. So you need both of these. This is an SD card extension and this is an SD to full size SD. Because I want to, if you look down here, the SD card slots here. And I moved it up to here on the top so it's a lot easier to get to and... It's a full-size SD card. So now my Ender 3 and all of my printers from now on, one, as I have the money, this is, not, this is like 30 bucks right here, $26 for the two of these. Um, so I can't just buy 10. <laughs> I don't got that kind of money. But anyway, now I have a full-size SD card on the front of the printer, and that is much, much nicer. And um, this extension plugs, you slide it through the hole and make the hole a little bigger, slide the extension through, plug it in, then you just rod it around the fan. And I just hot glue... Right on here, I put some hot glue on here and put it right up against the fan inside here and hot glue it right to this plate. So when you go to remove this, you take these screws out and you remove it, you disconnect these two parts and you can remove the plate and the SD card holder stays on the top plate. 
I also added lighting. So you can get these pre-wired 12 volt LEDs. I got a big pack of them. Since I use two per printer. Now this printer runs on 24 volts, so you need to wire these in series. So what you do is you take a black and a red from each one, wire it together, and then you take the other black and the red and wire it to power, and now it's 24 volts, since you have 12 volt, 12 volt in series. I also bought these nifty strips. I think there's 20 of them? Yeah, a pack of 20. So I got enough here to do 10 printers, well, nine more. And they are these things. Now, it just so happens that these, same thing, 12 volts, so you got to wire them again in series so that you can get these to run off 24 volts. These slide right into these extrusions. Little bugger, oh, there's a bolt there, so that's not going to go in, but they slide right into the extrusions here. And they're in here already. When I turn this printer on, you'll see them light up. It's pretty cool. But it just lights up the whole printer. And then these two LEDs that I showed you are here. And they give me a spotlight effect to light up the nozzle. I also put a 30 millimeter fan on here with my custom hot end. I put some Capricorn tubing. It's wired up with a JST connector. This JST connector connects the cooling fan as well as the two LED lights in the series. Even though the spool holder that came with the printer was just fine, I like the color theme I was going with here with orange, so I put my custom spool holder on here. So I have my nice orange APLA Autumn Orange 3D Fuel spool holder. I also reprinted the PCB cover in the orange, so all the parts on here now are orange. And let's go over this. Let me move all these components out of the way, and you can get a close-up of some of these. This is the SD card adapter. And then this is the extension. Very handy. These are your dampers. You do have to clip some bolts for here. It's a little tricky because of the um, this cover. But here's your dampers. Basically, this is actually three pieces. You have two metal plates. One plate attaches to the printer. One plate attaches to the stepper motor. But these two metal plates don't touch each other. They are connected by an overmold of rubber in between them. So that isolates the vibrations, the high frequency vibrations from your stepper motor from your printer. And the noise reduction is... It's spectacular. It's truly mind-blowing. I, I have a stack of these. I have enough of these to do like, like 20 printers because yeah, I only need two. One for the um, X and one for the Y. The other two don't move fast enough to really need it. Um, and I never used them. I never got around to putting them on and I can't believe I waited this long to put them on. Every, every printer I have is getting these. It's, it's, <laughs> it's truly spectacular how quiet it is. And of course, this is your JST connector. It's just a pre-wired connector. This is what you'll see these on RC airplanes, but they're just very handy because they're compact. So I have a whole box of those, a whole bag of those, a whole bag of the pre-wired LED lights. And the last thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need yourself glue gun. Glue gun comes in handy. It's gonna let you install this. It's gonna let you install the fans, etc. My the hot end on this printer is the same physical dimensions as the original hot end and I might be switching back to the original hot end because I like the screw in better I think it makes a better heat break but it's been working fine so I guess I'll leave it alone um, I actually need to redo this and lower it because the um, the hot end the actual heat sink sits about I want to say 10 12 millimeters lower maybe not quite that much maybe six or seven millimeters lower than the um, hot end on the other printer. So while the holes line up, the position of these holes relative to the position of the hot end is slightly different. It's changed on the z-axis. So this whole entire hot end actually pokes down a little further on um, the Ender 3 than it does on the other Creality printers. So I need to, re that's why this is not held on with screws. I actually have this hot glued in place because I needed the fan to be lowered and also, the fan does not line up with the nozzle anymore. The edge of the fan is right here, and that's actually in front of the nozzle. So I need to shift this entire fan that way, back closer to the extrusion. 
in order for the fan to actually blow where the nozzle is. Although it's been working fine so far, there's enough overblow. But uh, that is a change I will make. So I will redesign this to better account for the positioning of the nozzle relative to the fan. Um, of course, Capricorn tubing, you know about that. Let's go over some of the little doodads and upgrades that I've added to the printer. Basically, I looked for anything for the Ender 3 and added it. Just why not? For shiggles. Um, so this is neat. This is a tray. Originally, I was able to use just this piece here alone, but that required the SD card, if you can see this, to be here on the inside. So the SD card actually popped out the side here. The problem with that is then you can't use the tray, and I really like the tray. So I bought the extension, which allowed me to place the SD card holder here, which I prefer better because that's up high, easy to get to, easy to reach. I was really impressed with how um, nice that works right there. So this tray requires minimal support, and it slides into the extrusion. So you have that little slot there that grabs onto the extrusion. They put the Ender logo on there. Can you see it? There it is. That's the Ender logo. But that's a nice little parts and accessories and goodies tray. But that slides right in there like that. And that's it. It slides right in there. I have these little clips that I printed. Links to all these will be down below. These little clips allow you to neatly route your wiring. So let me change camera angles and show you that. So as you can see here, we have the clips holding the ribbon cable going to the LCD screen. I had it wrapped around the side here and coming up to here and folding up neatly in, but then it interferes with the tray. So I got rid of that. I leave it in the back now so it doesn't interfere with the tray. I would like to put a notch in here and add a little pin to the side of this so this holds better, but it does hold pretty good. But I would like to have this held up like this, so it's not bending down like this, which causes it to bind. So just having a pin on there so that it actually fits in the track there would make the slide better. That's a change I might make. This is a, um, a nightshade for the screen. So as you can see, it's actually got the logo built in there. Well, you can't see it from there. There you go. So it's only one layer thick or two layers thick. The idea being in a dark room, the screen being lit up will now be covered, but you'll be able to see the Ender logo. I don't have any use for that, but it's something that other people might enjoy. Then over here, this is the PCB cover, which is, I consider, a necessary upgrade. It's this cover here that bolts in place, and it covers up the electronics back here so that you don't touch nothing. I'm going to add a switch right here. So I can turn these um, ambiance lights on and off when I don't need them. So I can just flip a switch and turn them on or off. This is a part I am not going to use. I don't like it, but other people might. It's a little tool tray. Excuse the boxes. I've been going through a lot of stuff here. I'm not big on that tool tray, but some of you might like that. So there it is. Let me change angle again. So back here you can see I have more of the clips helping to route the wires. I added two JST plugs to the secondary ports on the power supply here. So there's this one here going to the ambiance lighting. Then I have a spare one sitting right here in case I want to plug something else into it. Just remember these are 24 volt, not 12. You also have this little press fit in place shield, like a grommet. The, these don't move very much, but this will guarantee that when these wires wiggle around, they're not cutting into the raw edge of the cut aluminum here. So it's kind of like a, a protective grommet to keep you from damaging your wiring. Um, here is where the heat sink would go, right on the back of this. I wonder if I could use these screw holes. I wonder if that is even practical. You know, take two out, um, break away a couple of the blades on the heat sink so I can screw the heat sink into that. That would work a lot better. We'll see. I don't know if that's possible or practical or not. This one here, I can't do that with because this, as you can see, comes right up against the stepper motor here. So this will hit the heat sink if I put a heat sink on here. So the only way that's going to work is if I get rid of most of the teeth on the heat sink in these two rows. 
so that this has clearance to pass. I may or may not do that, or I may just attach the heatsink to the side here, so you know, better than nothing kind of scenario. Um, this one shouldn't be a problem, just attach the heatsink to the bottom. And here is the new hot end or feeder assembly. It is really nice. The important thing to me was that it had the funnel shaped inlet so that um, the filament doesn't grind into the metal or plastic. Um, here's my custom spool holder. So just the bigger ones it'll slide over. And for ones with a smaller neck, this is actually removable. So you can actually unscrew this. And this all prints flat, so you don't have to worry about that. It's threaded on both ends. It's a nice little spool holder. It works well. This is available on Thingiverse. Links will be below, of course. And that is about it. Time to show you it lit up. Here we are looking at the front of the printer again. And I turn the lights on. When I turn the printer on, the lights come on. And you have these lights here. And then you also have lights there and they light up the build volume of the printer and then these two bulbs here are spot bulbs and they light up where the nozzle is so you have a very very crisp clear view even in the dark room you have a very clear view of what your printer is actually doing my custom hot end that i made for the ender 2 and cr10 um, allows me to have full exposure of the entire hot end instead of everything being hidden inside of this gigantic block that just covers everything up. I want to see what the nozzle is doing. I need to see what the nozzle is doing. Um, it's not quite perfect. The actual hot end sits a little bit lower on this printer than it does in the other two. So the holes are all there. They all line up, but the z-axis here is a little lower, about six millimeters. So I need to take this entire assembly in 3D and lower it about six millimeters and keeping these holes in the same spot, but lowering this portion of it six millimeters down so that the fan more correctly lines up with the fins on the heatsink, and um, it'll also allow me to properly mount this, since I had to mount this lower in order to get it down to where the nozzle is, because if I put it through the mounting holes, it's just blowing on the heat block. Um, JST plug connects them, so that allows me to unplug this and remove this entire hot end. No problem, I can just unplug it and pull the whole thing off of there. Um, what else? Oh, here you can see the privacy cover just blocks the screen. I have no need for that, but somebody might like that. If you have this in a room where you're sleeping, which I wouldn't advise. But, um, <laughs> I mean, it's not loud, but I just don't want a printer in my bedroom. You know, just, uh, that little bit of white noise would bug me. Um, I think I have a possible fix for the right-hand trolley. I have these cylindrical diamond bits that are made to go sideways. So I'm going to take the round holes on the trolley and turn them into slots. This way, the screw that goes into this beam can move left and right. So instead of this, the two holes not lining up and forcing the trolley one way or the other, which is what's causing the binding, it would instead um, simply go where it needs to go. It would become a zero load connection, which is what you want. Um, if you make, a, if you upgrade to this all metal feeder assembly, keep the parts for the old ones. So that is a perfectly good feeder assembly that you can use on some other printer. Um, if you want the tool holder that mounts up here with hammer nuts, I don't want it. I don't like it, so I'm going to get rid of that. But I printed it out for you guys. It's got slots for everything. You know, for all your Allen keys, your wrenches, your nippers, your cutters, your USB drive. All of it's got about holes there for all of it. Um, i got to figure out how to mount the heat sinks, fix the trolley, and that'll be about it. Um, I think some of my perturbations in my print are the result of this vibrating slightly. See, so if I touch this, you can actually see it move, vibrate back and forth. You can't see that while it's printing, but I'm betting you it's just enough. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see this, you can see the layers are not quite perfectly lined up. I mean, it's a good print, there's no question about it, but it's not an ender quality print. And that annoys me. You can feel it when you rub your finger on it, too. The layers on the Ender 2 line up so perfectly, and on this one, they don't. I mean, it's a, it's a good print. I got no complaints in general. You can see it more here. It's really hard to pick up on camera. You can see it right away in person. 
layers just don't line up. And I think that might be due as the bed is moving back and forth. This arm is permitted to vibrate just slightly. And that slight vibration is enough to mess things up. When I slow down even more, I get some really nice prints. And the layers line up pretty darn good, but I have to run pretty slow for that. So I think getting that trolley reinstalled will be a good thing. I just gotta bye bye dribble and make those holes in the slots so that it doesn't bind up. And I think that'll be good. It's holding bed level very well since I got rid of the trolley so that this is not binding up, forcing the arm to pivot. I still haven't put my third hole in there yet, but that is something I plan to do. I plan to drill an additional hole through here into this plate so that I can have three bolts holding this in place. Since nothing goes in this track, I might even switch to nut and bolt instead of threading through the rod, the extrusion. By using nut and bolt, I can go tighter. Um, but bed level is holding good. I have not had to tweak or adjust the bed. I still do not like how much this bed moves. I mean, it, it doesn't appear to be affecting the prints, but I do not like that rhombus four-point setup. I just don't like it. It's not stable. If I push down hard on one end, you can see the bed twist as I push down on it. But ever since I fixed this, this has not changed anymore. It is level every time I start printing. I have not had to tweak or adjust the bed level at all. And I've put three or 400 hours worth of prints through this, maybe 500, 600 hours worth of prints, pretty much continuously. This printer's pretty much run nonstop since I got it. Last night was the first night it wasn't printing anything. And um, I'm pleased, it works good. Um, anything else? I can't think of anything else offhand. If there's something you guys would like to see, let me know. From what I gather, this is an original CR10 board in here, so no bootloader. Um, you'd have to get like one of those USB asps in order to um, put a bootloader on there to, you know, write firmware to it. So it's not the CR10S board, it's the CR10 board apparently. It can run on 12 or 24 volts. Did not know that. Um, I am going to replace the fan and the power supply. I was about to replace it last night and then I realized, ooh, that's a 24 volt fan. So I've got to get a 24 volt fan. It looks like 50 millimeter. Because that's the noisiest fan on here now is this power supply fan. So, I also want to get rid of this grill, because that just ruins efficiency of these fans. Same thing here, I'm going to get rid of the grill and put a proper grill on there. Maybe even um, um, put a bigger fan on here. You know, get rid of this fan altogether and put a bigger fan. <coughs> As people have noted, the cooling fan for the electronics does not work, because it's connected to the parts cooling fan. So right now, this printer is running, and that fan for the, the electronics inside here is off. And it will not turn on until that fan turns on. They are linked. That's no-no. This fan should be going. Especially if you don't run this fan at full speed. This fan sometimes below 35%. This fan will run, but this one won't. You gotta help it. You know, blow it to get it started, and then it starts spinning. 100% um, runs fine. So now I have to run my parts cooling at 100% all the time. So that I can make sure these fans go. And also, um, this fan tends to make a whining noise when it's not running at 100%. Electronic whine. Running at 100% goes away. So that's something to look into. I have a 30 millimeter version of this coming in that I'm going to try smaller. Because uh, I don't think I need a 40 millimeter fan. I just need to direct it right there. I'd like to get that little micro one that they have from E3D. They have a little blower fan like this that's really tiny. It's really nice looking. That's it. I went back to a brass nozzle. The uh, nozzle I put on from this kit was not quite working properly with this. I kept having printing issues. Not sure why. I went back to a brass nozzle. Printing issues went away. I don't know if its specific heat wasn't high enough, so it was cooling off too much at the nozzle. Or more likely, because um, I cannot easily show you. Well, I kind of can, actually. I think I know why it was doing it. Here is a nozzle. Now you see where the filament is coming out. Now you see the mating surface, the surface right here. This is the actual mating surface that would actually butt up against the heat break inside of there. 
Well, look at this one. See how the mating surface is covered in filament? What that tells me is that the heat break tube inside the printer and the nozzle were not properly butting up against each other, which means there was a small gap in between them that was allowing filament to ooze into that gap instead of through the extrusion path. Well, that filament is going to cause drag, especially as it cooks off, because that filament's going to sit in that crack in there, and it's just going to cook. And eventually, it's going to clog things up, get ejected out when it gets grabbed onto by some passing filament, that molten filament is going through. So I think those nozzles are simply incompatible with this hot end. Um, or I have to reinstall it differently or something. But I said, screw it, went back to a brass nozzle. I now have nozzles that I know work well. The plated A2 hardened steel nozzles from Micro Swiss. I use these on my other printers, and I know they work well. So I will put this nozzle on this printer when the time is right um, and go from there. So if you guys have any questions, ask away. I love answering questions when I can. And links to all these goodies will be down below. I don't think the Ender 3 is yet available from anybody. I still think they're making it. Hopefully they'll make some of the corrections into the printer. I mean, it works fine the way it is, but I would like to see some of these corrections made, especially since most of them are simple QC issues. They don't have to invest any money into fixing it. They just have to change the way it's manufactured. Uh, but otherwise, that's it. You guys have a great day. Thank you.